Hello all my pummeling people and welcome back to the channel. It's me, Only Run Very Noob, bringing you Bravo gameplay on the Talishar client. Today I have something a little special for you. Um, not so much the game, but uh, the fine people down at Metal Fab Tokens decided to give me something really cool to reveal to you guys and I'm super excited about it. So why don't we just get into it. So I got this little bag here super nice and it's a really cool resource token as you can see on this side it's blue and kind of like bronze really nice detail it doesn't come up on the camera but in between here the bronze is like it has a really cool uh, sort of texture like a, like a cracking layer it just looks really nice and the color is great but uh, I haven't showed you the best part yet, so let's bring it over to the other side. Oh, look how beautiful that is. Two resources floating, and it shows you the Pummel Club. Um, I absolutely love this token. This is one of my favorite ones they've ever made. The definition is super nice on it. You can see, like, the club, and behind it there's, like, these crack marks, which also kind of show up on the other side with the one resource. And, you know, this is a Bravo channel. We love pummeling people. Um, I can't see myself using another resource token besides this. This is going to be my go-to. And uh, I'm really just super happy, super stoked that they let me reveal this to you guys on this channel. Um, they do a lot of great stuff down at Metal Fab Tokens. Uh, I basically use them exclusively for my token needs. You know, I have a few dice that they make and just like a bunch of tokens. They have a really cool go again dominate token that I also use. So if you want to get your hands on one of these tokens, you can comment, like, subscribe down below. Uh, if your name shows up on all three of these things, um, you'll be entered into a drawing. And whoever wins that drawing will have Metal Fab Tokens directly ship you one of these really cool uh, Pummel resource tokens. I think you'd want to get your hands on this one. It, it looks really good. Uh, my camera doesn't do it justice. I mean, the definition and the, like, it's just so cool. It's like, you know, like the 3D-ness of it. I don't know. The depth of it is just super nice. Uh, they do a lot of a really amazing work down there. Um... So yeah, I'm just going to repeat that comment, like, and subscribe. And if you show up, uh, if you comment on this video, you like my channel, like this video and subscribe to my channel, and I see your name on all there, you'll be entered into a drawing, and the winner of the drawing will get one of those really cool tokens. So uh, yeah, I'm excited about that, and you guys should be too. Without further ado, we'll just get down, back down into the gameplay. We'll shrink me down here. And um, today we're playing against Dash IO. So my plan into Dash is to just fatigue them. Um, I've sort of been playing that style into Dash, uh, at least Dash IO, right? And it's been very good. Like they just kind of run out of cards. They play a bunch of sort of like low impact items off the top of their deck which, you know, having an extra card in your deck or like an extra card in your hand because it's the top of your deck is really good, but it also exhausts the cards from their deck really fast. And I'm pretty sure like red boom grenade is the only item they have that's actually like a card's worth of value. And sometimes it's not even a card's worth of value because if you, you know, block out and they don't get that effect, it's not really giving them any value, even though it's fatiguing them a card. Uh, my sideboard plan is to sideboard out the two blocks and pummel in Zealous Belting because we're not looking to really hold a hand. We're just looking to block out. And I also side out Sigils. Normally if I'm fatiguing like an aggro deck, I kind of like Sigil. But against the, this dash IO, I really want to make sure all the cards in my hand block so that I'm not just like uh, getting blown out by boom grenades with having like cards in my hand that don't block. And I sideboard, sideboarded out the red unmovable in this recording, but I believe the red unmovable is probably like fine. Um, it's just a card you can put in arsenal and turn like one blue into something that can block like a big attack. Sometimes they play the item that pumps up 
like an attack they boost. I forget what it's called, like Hadron Collider or something. But even if it's just blocking like a red throttle on a boom grenade turn, that's like very good. So I think it's worth considering. And my equipment, uh, let's see if I get to my equipment here. But my equipment, I do bring the uh, Titan's Fist and Steel Blade, Steel Blade Buckler, I believe. Maybe I didn't in this video. Yeah, it looks like I'm just on a Nothos. So I think when you want to block out boom grenades, I think shield is good. So I probably should have been on shield here. Um, just to block out grenades. But it's a new hero. I'm working out how I want to sideboard against it exactly. And um, I just pull from recordings that might be from before I decided I wanted to have my shield. So we go first, and we draw two blues that are pretty good when going first, but unfortunately we can't like turn either of them on here. Uh, Stamp Authority requires two cards that cost three or more. Imposing Visage requires two blues. So we're just kind of stuck. Something we, that's sort of interesting here is that they're on Tecloplasma Pistol instead of Symbiosis Shot. So not sure... Not really sure what that's about at this point in the game, but something to keep an eye out for. Um, they're also only on 65 cards, so it should be pretty easy to fatigue them. So I think my plan this hand is to just make a surge and hammer for six. Um, if I'm looking to fatigue my opponent, I kind of just want to attack them with hammer. Like, sure, they get to filter their hand, but it does fatigue them two cards. A little unfortunate we can't play either of our uh, Stamp Authority or Imposing Visage for like free value on turn zero here, but you, you do what you can with what you have, and that's about all that can be expected of you, right? Sometimes you just got to uh, not let it get to you and just make the play that you can. And of course, at the end of our turn, we're going to arsenal one of these defense reactions um, the defense reactions are pretty good against them. They have breakpoints of four. You want to be blocking stuff like Underloop and uh, what is it, Drive Through Data? The one that's like, if it hits, they get to opt one. So we're not going to filter away like a defense react. We're just going to keep them here. It's always tough to talk about our hand in a fatigue strat before we see what our opponent does because we're really are looking to block with as many cards as possible, hopefully saving a defense reaction for our arsenal if we can so that on their bigger turns we can block with five cards instead of just four. They load the pistol and just play a tech low core. So we get to keep our full hand but it's not very great. Um, we can make a Surge and then throw Command and Conquer for 6. Um, and with all these cards behind, like they might be afraid of a Pummel. They might be more of afraid of a Pummel if we had our resource token that had the Pummel on it. Which is really sick. I can't wait to start playing with that live. It looks like I do filter out my Fate for Scene here. Maybe when I was playing this game, I was super mindful of the pistol and thinking, oh, if they're on Tecloplasma Pistol, that must mean they have pistol items, in which case I don't really want my defense reactions. I kind of want to be aggressive. And they block out. We draw a hand that can play Rouse the Ancients, which is nice. Um... But they do just hit us with a throttle with no boost. Throttle with no boost indicates to me that they're probably not on some super aggressive plan like Dash IO normally is. So I'm probably just going to block with the defense reaction and arsenal and then rouse the ancients, hammer, and then arsenal the starstruck. Just trying to get the reactions any sort of value that I can at this point because I must be afraid that if they're bringing pistol, they have pistol items and that fatiguing them won't really be an option once they develop plasma purifiers and induction chambers and such. 
kind of an interesting take on Dash IO. It might be like a sideboard swap into the decks that can fatigue them, because I do know that Dash IO is incredibly susceptible to fatigue, so they might know that as well and be trying some sort of sideboard swap. Not entirely sure if it's that effective. Um, but as you can see, we do have our defense reactions in deck, and we don't have pummels and zealous beltings. So even though they start with four less life than old dash, it might be harder for us to aggro them down. So it might have some merits to have that sideboard swap, just because um, they might know that we're going to have a bunch of cards in our deck that just aren't that effective. I'm kind of a fidgeter, so sometimes you see me just kind of like bounce between my cards uh, when I'm waiting for my opponent. Sorry if that annoys you guys. Um, I wish I could say I'll try to stop, but uh, it would probably just give you false hope because I could try as I may. It's still going to happen because I'm sort of a fidgeter. I can't flick the cards in my hands like playing live, so I uh, bounce my mouse around. And we see a fate for scene out of our opponent, so we're pretty sure that they are on like a slower plan, like an old dash pistol plan, which is definitely a very interesting take. We draw into another rouse hand, which is pretty fortunate here, because um, we definitely do just want to um, be super aggressive if they are not um, playing super aggressive themselves because I don't think we can fatigue them if they develop items. They get an Opticai monocle or however that might be pronounced. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, our opponent might still be trying to feel out this new hero and this might have been recorded like a couple of weeks ago when things were like less refined as well. But we do get to rouse the Ancients, and we're just going to make a Surge and then hammer for six, leaving our Starstruck in Arsenal because we don't have enough to play at this turn. But we will make a Surge just in case this next turn we have to block for some reason, and then we could throw Starstruck off two blues. We could even, if we have three blues, we could still dominate Starstruck and float the Surge, which can end up being nice. But it seems like this is going to be kind of a long, grindy matchup. Um, with them starting with less life, though, and zero pistol items instead of the one that Old Dash gets to just start with for free, I feel like it's probably going to be easier than Old Dash. Um, the only thing that complicates that is we have like defense reactions in our deck that we don't really um, want. They just attack us for two, and we draw kind of an interesting hand. We we have two reds, so we can't dominate anything unless we really want to just dominate the Starstruck and Arsenal and like pitch our whole hand, because we could pitch both of our reds to activate the hero and then both of the blues to throw Starstruck. Don't really like that plan. We could also... This is our third rouse, and we probably want to resolve that this game. But we're not going to be able to get, like, Starstruck out of our arsenal and arsenal the rouse. We can't really play the rouse from our hand, because we could play it, but then we only have two reds left, so there's no follow-up hammer. There's potential we could think about, like, a Crown of Providence play here to, like, Crown of Providence, get, get the Starstruck out of our arsenal, and hopefully draw another blue so that we could play Rouse the Ancients, revealing whatever we need to to give it go again, and then with the blue that we hopefully draw, we can hammer. And even if we don't draw blue, like if we draw a red, we could even maybe pitch all three of our reds to hammer, although I like that quite a bit less than the blue, obviously. And if we're using crown, 
Might be a little aggressive use of crown. Probably not expecting Command and Conquer out of their deck, as even though they're playing sort of a slower item-based plan, they're probably not building for that. It's probably like a sideboard swap into Guardian specifically, or decks that can fatigue them specifically. Hmm. I almost like just blocking with Spinal and then just like throwing Crippling Crush off the two blues. Hoping that we draw into attacks that can we can stack under our rouse, because obviously it next to the showtime doesn't really help activate it on second cycle if we get there. So yeah, I think that'll be my final answer. Block with spinal and then just throw crippling. We might even just throw starstruck instead of the crippling. Uh, looking to dominate the crippling later, as opposed to saving the starstruck to dominate. Yeah, and it looks like that's what I'm going to end up doing. I sort of forget what I just pitched. Maybe it would be good next to the Rouse. Maybe that's why I'd pitch it on top. But if I pitch it on the bottom, I can look to pitch two attacks next turn so that that Rouse is turned on uh, in second cycle. They just pass, so they must have defense reactions here, like... There's no world in which they're just taking 10 from Starstruck here, right? Red unmovable from Arsenal, so they're on a very sort of defensive build. Um, if they have room for that many reactions, maybe they are on like a pistol plan first. Which seems very weird, because Dash IO can't play like... If she could play any item off the top as an instant for plus one cost... That would be an interesting thing to think about. Because you could just like pitch a blue to play a pistol item off the top, but she can only play zero and one drops. They just play a boom grenade. We get to keep all her, our whole hand. So we get to just dominate this Crippling Crush. Not expecting it to hit, because they have a bunch of equipment and they've already shown a bunch of um, reactions. They even just pitched a Fate for Scene to play boom grenade off the top. Which would indicate to me they had like another reaction they wanted for Arsenal. We get to Arsenal, the Command and Conquer as well, but that's not quite as good without Pummels in our deck. Red Unmovable from Hand. That's not enough to stop the Crush. Okay, so they're just going to fully cover it up. And yeah, like I was saying, Command and Conquer and Arsenal is normally pretty decent if you have Pummel in your deck, because you can just like leave it down there until you draw Pummel. But we don't have Pummel in our deck, so it's not not the greatest card to have in Arsenal, but it is something. And I think having it in Arsenal is a little bit more valuable than having like a Surge, which is our only other option for it, right? We could have pitched it to make a Seismic Surge. They come in for four. They do have that boom grenade though. But I'm not afraid of them dealing damage to me. Like I don't think that's their plan. So I'm just willing to take that full damage. Um, perhaps I should have used an equipment on it just because it's like the equipment would block five essentially. And I don't think you get more value out of your equipment. So maybe I'm supposed to just use equipment. And then, yeah, with our three-card hand, we're just going to play this Terra Sunder. Especially because they don't have an arsenal. They would have to have their third red unmovable or their armor. Like a whole bunch of armor. And getting their armor on a Terra Sunder is pretty nice. Like um, That gives the rest of our crush effects on our deck like free reign. And getting rid of the crown also makes it so Command and Conquer basically has to be blocked with two cards. Uh, if they don't want to lose their arsenal eventually. And with the amount of reacts we've seen in their deck, I also think like the other text of Command and Conquer not being able to be defense reacted is also solid here. BIOS update's an interesting one. Um, I didn't think you would see BIOS update and red unmovable in the same deck. Um, but here we are.
They play Techno Core off the top as an instant. Load up the pistol. And throw a pulse, pulse Wave Harpoon at us. Which I think is nice because I do want to block with this hand. Because I think I want to play Command and Conquer, make a Surge, and Arsenal Crippling. And if they didn't let us block anything, I'm not 100% sure what I would do with this hand. Maybe just dominate Buckling Blow and hold on to Crippling Crush, but I don't, I'm not like in love with that either. So we're going to show them a card we're just going to block with, which is either Buckling Blow or Terra Sunder. We show them Buckling Blow and then we block with Buckling Blow. And they attack us with Pistol, which I think we could just block with Terra Sunder here. Um, we're not going to use it this turn cycle, and it's not like we really need to preserve that threat, I don't think. They still have a long way to go before they develop enough Pistol items for it to be grindy. And sort of like an inevitable game state, right? Definitely an in interesting take on Dash IO. Not 100% sure, like, if it's a good route to take, but I always like to see people um, being creative and sort of pushing the boundaries of deck building, seeing what they can get away with. Because um, I'm sure that the tree frog, the old tree frog, like full control dash, was also kind of like that. Like people thought, oh, it's mechanologist. You have boost cards. You want to put all mech cards in your deck, and then someone realized, oh no, you just set up pistol items and have like blue and movables and Fandel's fighting spirit in your deck, and it's good. So we see them develop their first pistol item. We can dominate we can make a surge and dominate this crippling and like arsenal sink below. Not sure how good sink below and arsenal is though. But it's probably better than like overpitching it. Because even if they just pistol us for two, I guess it's like a card we can block with. And at some point they're gonna have to start throwing like actual attacks at us, I would think. They'll probably sink below or fate for scene in Arsenal. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't block with the Foundry Heart. They're completely out of armor though, so hopefully our future threats will be very good. I'm not blocking this because they have so many cards behind that I'd rather get full value out of my three blocks. So if they go like red zipper hit or something, I'd rather I'd rather save my blocks for that. Might end up costing me a little bit. They just end up playing Plasma Purifier, so we kind of lose a little bit of value there. Because uh, we could have blocked and still did what we want to do, which is make a Surge, dominate this Red Buckling Blow. Um, which is basically has no Crush effect, because they have no armor that has any block value left anyway. Although I suppose we could put it on like Achilles Accelerator or Goliath Gauntlet, looking to buckle it away later. Because um, when they have a bunch of Plasma Purifiers, Achilles Accelerator can be worth like 4 or 5 damage. And buckling that away might be nice. So yeah, I definitely think I should have used equipment earlier to stop that Boom Grenade on hit. Um, that was probably just a mistake. Like straight up.
High speed impact is four points, so I'm just going to use my defense reaction when I can. Uh, just get my four point value here. I'm not going to sink a card because I want the three blues and the starstruck to dominate the starstruck. So it looks like we're going to take 9 damage here, because they have zipper hit into pistol, give it go again, use the one floating to load pistol, shoot it again. Um, but I think that's reason, that's fine. Like, we have 11 block on our equipment. And on this pistol shot, we could probably even use our civic steps. Oh no, I shouldn't use my civic steps here. I should use my civic steps on there. But I guess it doesn't really matter. I guess they can Teclo Foundry Heart if they want to gamble. Because if they Foundry Heart and get two resources, they could pistol three times instead of just two. Yep. And they hit. I think I need to be a little safer with my Civic Steps there. That was probably a misplay. Um, a lot of my Civic Steps early on, like learning how to use it, are probably going to end up being misplays because it's kind of tough to use that appropriately. He ends up just loading the Plasma Purifier though. Not sure what that's about. I think he's probably just supposed to shoot me an extra time. And I could have even used Civic Steps on that pistol again, knowing that this one having go again wouldn't do anything. So that's like two Civic Steps uh, gaffes in the same turn which is impressive in its own right. <laughs> but yeah, we just dominate the Starstruck and hope it's not a defense reaction arsenal. That's kind of going to be the plan moving forward, is to just hope that we can land big crush effects because they have no armor. And punish them for drawing the rest of their pistol items that they might have to give us tempo to play. It is a sink below. Unfortunate. But we still get three damage through. Still have a bunch of armor, like nine armor. Because what is this? Three, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. Yeah. They start um, opting with their monocle. Not entirely sure what they're looking for here. two bottoms maybe they're looking for like a boom grenade but maybe they just had uh, non mechanologist cards on top and they want to boost here or maybe they just want to get closer to having like another like their third pistol item it's really hard for me to know So they bought them a bunch. They bought them like four times, and then they just don't use their last one. Um, maybe they have like a card with that new keyword that when you sack an item, it gets plus two block. I don't know. Really couldn't say. Um, but with this hand, I am looking to take damage, make a surge, activate hero, and then dominate this red buckling blow just to like try to leak damage through. And then Arsenal is starstruck, looking to dominate it off three blues at some point. Huh. Just throw starstruck. I think this is probably a mistake as well. Like, I think I want to be dominating this. Not entirely sure what I was thinking here. Because I think my plan should be to just like leak damage as much as possible, which means dominate my cards as much as possible, exhaust his resources. Um, they have 21 cards in deck and we have 40. So it's 
like there's potential that we fatigue them, but if they play like two more pistol items, I don't think there's any way we fatigue them. Uh, this crippling crush, I definitely want to dominate at some point, so I'd be very surprised if I do anything besides block with spinal crush, dominate, um, buckling blow, and then arsenal crippling crush. They T-bone us. And we're just going to block with tech plating here. I block with crown of providence. Huh. Digging for another blue to dominate crippling and then arsenal spinal. I don't even I don't even know. Is this even me playing this game? I don't get like I just don't get a lot of my lines here at all. It just seems so weird. Maybe I was a little flustered because I was like, oh, they're playing dash, they have pistol items, and we have reactions in our deck. We gotta make something happen, but uh, I don't I don't think I do. I think I would have been fine with just like Blocking tech plating there, and then blocking this pistol with Spinal Crush or something. But as it stands now, I think I just make a Surge and throw Spinal Crush and then Arsenal Crippling Crush. I'm taking 3 damage down to 13 here. They are sort of burning through their deck here though. So maybe fatigue is like back on the menu. Um, but with all those pistol items, not 100% sure. And it's like, do they even have any other pistol items? Because only two is not enough. Like going 3-3, three, three, we can just block six and then hammer for six. And eventually they're going to have to uh, block with the blues that they want to pitch into their pistol. They need more pistol items than just two. This is an attack they definitely got to give us two cards for. Um, I don't see them just being able to take six and getting crushed. So what are we getting another fate for scene here that we saw them pitch early? It's only turn 13 so they shouldn't be hitting pitch stack although they did boost away nine cards and opted to the bottom with monocle so it does make a lot of sense that they would be hitting their pitch stack here. Plasma Purifier, looks like they're just going 3-3. Three, three. We are going to block with Fate for Scene, and then maybe even like some equipment. Maybe even equipment first here, I don't know. Yeah, we could even block with Civic Steps. They do have a card in hand, which... So this Civic Steps might look weird because it's like, oh, they have a card in hand. They can get resources to shoot you three times with the pistol. But if we know that this, if this card gets pitched, we know they have no armor and no arsenal, which means our Crippling Crush dominating next turn is going to be great. So we're kind of trying to incentivize, that. we're actually trying to incentivize them to pitch this card. And yeah, he loads Purifier, so this means he is going to pitch this last card. Which means our dominated Crippling Crush is going to be incredibly huge here. And I should use Fate for Scene on this last pistol, hopefully. I don't think having it in Arsenal does us too much. I think I'd rather opt one to try to get like a react like a like another threat next turn. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to fate for scene to opt here instead of just save it for arsenal. Um I think the extra point that we might get from blocking like a four isn't really worth it here. I think it's probably better to just dig for another threat follow up to this crippling 
which we can be pretty sure is going to hit, because even if they have red unmovable in their hand, they're still uh, going to take four. But it looks like they don't even have that, so they're going to end up just taking eight here, which is like a ton. And leave them with a one-card hand. And they either do nothing or pitch their last card. And if they pitch their last card, that means all of our crush effects, like our big dominated crush effects, are good. Um, they're at five. So if I, cr if I dominate Cranial Crush, and they only have a three block, they die. But that does require me keep all my cards, because this is... Uh, Discounted down to five from the surge, but we would still need our fate for scene to get up to seven for five plus two from hero. But if they can only deal six, we can just fate for scene uh, from arsenal and then take three down to six. Maybe even using equipment if we want. Topping the Spinal Crush just in case. So it would have been really nice for us to Fate for Scene last turn, because we would have Fate for Scene, saw Fate for Scene, put it at the bottom, and then had three blues and Spinal Crush. Um, of course, that's results oriented thinking. We, like, in hindsight, it's easy to know we should have done that. But I think even at the time, it was correct to just fate for scene to dig for a threat. So I fate for scene here? Not trying to kill him? Huh. That's very interesting. And by interesting, I mean kind of bad here. I think I'm just supposed to like take the three damage and then make them have it because we could send an eight dominate and if they only block three, they take five. And I'm not even dominating the disable, I'm just sending cranial undominated. Don't really like this play at all. Just lets them block with two cards and then keep a bunch of cards to pistol us a couple times. They even have Teclocore, which could give them resources to like play an attack and then pistol a couple times. Yeah, I don't like my play this game at all. I would say this is like a C minus D plus effort from me. Even just dominating the Disable is probably better. Putting them to like one and having them have three cards in their hand. But with this hand, pretty easy. We want to dominate this Spinal Crush. So we're going to sink below and then block with armor if we have to. Let's just play Boom Grenade. Does that do anything? can't imagine that does anything. I think they're supposed to not play that boom grenade and like put it in an arsenal to maybe maybe scare us into not dominating something, but of course we're just going to dominate our spinal crush. And with no armor they're going to be pretty hard-pressed to live through this turn. Although they would have been hard-pressed to live through last turn if we would have played it better and dominated our crippling or our cranial crush.
So dominate Spinal and hope it's good enough, which it looks like it is. And yeah, we end up taking that game. Um, definitely an interesting take on Dash IO. I think if you want to, I think if you want to be on a pistol plan, you definitely need to be playing more than two pistol items. Um, I don't think two pistol items, as you can see, they're only at six cards left in their deck. So if we would have tried to full fatigue them, we probably still could have through two pistol items. Maybe not. It, it would have been interesting and close because we still have like over half of our deck left. Um, we would have had to attack them a little bit, of course, but we would have been able to. They also had like boom grenades still left in their deck, which I think aren't great if their plan isn't to just like attack us a bunch. So I'm not sure really what they were thinking there. They were probably just testing like a sideboard plan for a fatigue to see if it was good enough. And I wouldn't be surprised if they learned it wasn't good enough after this game or other similar games like this. Um, but I definitely wanted to show this game because I thought it was kind of cool. Like, uh, Pistol and Dash IO, maybe give you guys some ideas if you're interested in heroes other than Bravo. Um, also, just to show this game that, like, I would consider myself a pretty decent Bravo player most of the time. But in this game... Um, a decent Bravo player was not piloting this game. I made a lot of mistakes. I made a lot of errors. I basically like missed lethal the turn before I won. I um, made a very questionable Crown of Providence play that I probably didn't have to make. I could have saved Crown of Providence until I like play Fate for Scene, see a threat on top, and then use Crown of Providence or something like on the second pistol shot. My first Civic Steps use was pretty bad, although my second one I think was kind of good. Um, forcing them to like not like incentivizing them to not arsenal a card so that we could dominate a crippling crush not that they would have arsenaled their blue but we don't know what their last card is and even if it was a defense reaction maybe they would have pitched it to get some extra damage uh, so yeah uh, definitely definitely a cool hero dash io and I'm interested to see uh, where this hero goes and how they solve the fatigue uh, problem because fatigue is a, a pretty big problem for Dash IO, um, and Bra even Bravo without a shield can fatigue it quite easily if you commit early. So yeah, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. There is that drawing for the really sweet Metal Fab Tokens um, Pummel Resource Coin, which I'll show you guys again. Just really cool. It's like. 3D. It's like awesome. Um, I'm going to have a lot of fun playing with this at Locals and beyond. Uh, I couldn't see them coming out with another resource token that I'd want to use over this Pummel one. Uh, definitely really cool, really funny. Um, when you have two resources floating, everyone is thinking of Pummel. But now, instead of just thinking it, you can show it to them. Which I think is really funny and uh, pretty sweet. So yeah, we're going to have a drawing for that. And um, I'll probably be announcing the winner of that drawing at the end of this week or something. So you have until, yeah, let's just say you have until Friday to uh, comment and like this video and subscribe to my channel. And then I will run a, uh, I don't know, like a lottery pick for the names. I'll just throw all the names in a bucket and pick one. And it could be you. And we'll ship it directly out to you. So I'd like to thank Metal Fab Tokens for giving, for giving me the honor of showing this really cool token and for providing me with this really cool token that I can use. Um, in the description, I'll link my deck list and I will also link uh, Metal Fab Tokens so you can go and check out all the other really cool stuff they have. Uh, they have a lot of good stuff there. I'm sure you guys have heard of them. They're pretty ubiquitous in the space, but if you haven't, check them out and I can almost guarantee you'll find something you like at a price point that is reasonable. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.